Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mike from Mobox and we're back with another intro showcase. The intro showcases are, if you don't remember, I've only had one of them, um, is I do a speed art and I do a tutorial for an intro or some sort of graphic that I see on TV, on the internet, on the web, and I show you how it's done. This week, we're gonna show you how to do the Vox intro slash outro logo effect. So we're just gonna come in here into After Effects. I'm just gonna check to make sure I'm recording because I did this once. Yep, I'm recording and I did not record it. So it was approximately gonna be between 15 and 20 minutes. So anyways, we're just gonna create a new composition. Um, new, Actually, we're already in a new, uh, let's create a new composition. New composition, um, I'm just gonna name this Vox logo. Um, 1080p, uh, 60 frames a second, 10 seconds is fine. We're just gonna hit go, create a new, a new background layer, new solid and we're gonna make it kind of off-white. Hit okay. So there we are with that. I want you to be able to see the most of it as, you, as, as big as you can. Um, I wish you could zoom into 66%, but you can't. All right, well anyways, um, I'm just gonna create some text and I'm gonna type in Vox because that's the name of the company um, or the logo that I'm following. Now this is not the exact text, but this is very similar. This is one that I had purchased already. It's called ITC Cas Caslon 224. You don't need this exact font. Don't worry if you just wanna follow and learn. Um, I'm just gonna set the anchor point into the center of the object. I'm using my motion script. This is not built into After Effects. This is purchased from mountmograph.com slash motion. If you search Mount Mograph on YouTube or on Google, you should find it. I'm just gonna press that and it centered up my anchor point right to the center. And I'm just gonna align this. This align tool comes from window align. It's built in After Effects and I'm just gonna align it vertically and horizontally. It's aligned, perfect. So now what I need to do is I need to right click this, this layer and go to convert shapes from text. Basically what that does is it creates create shapes of the text. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do when you have shapes. So on shape layers, I could I could change this text in different ways. For this instance, I'm not going to be doing that. Basically what I want is I just want the path information. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create some shapes here. Um, a V, press away, because I don't want the shapes to all be under one. Basically I'm trying to decouple all of these shapes from the same layer. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this, but I couldn't figure one out. Um, I'm gonna have an O. There's the inside of the O because that does also have shape information and then an X. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open the Vox, um, oh, not the text, we don't wanna open the text, we wanna open the, the Vox outlines and come into contents and open these up and find the path information and just check off those keyframes because we want that path information because we need to copy it and paste it onto the shapes. So I'm just gonna press U on the keyboard. So now it just only shows my keyframes. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna layer these in a way that puts these in order of shape. I'm gonna rename this to V, rename this to O, rename this to little O for the inside, and rename this to X. And let's see if I could do that. Let's see if this will work. I'm just gonna copy this, this and paste it in and it did not work. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to come in here and go to contents, path, and set path keyframes for all of these as well. I know this is a little bit of um, leg work, sometimes doing things, um, sometimes doing things takes time and, and it kind of sucks and I'm sure there's easier ways to do this and there's always people in the comments you know, making sure I'm aware of all the easier ways to do this and I love those comments because it helps me learn um, and then I could spread that learning to you guys. So I'm just gonna copy these keyframes and paste them onto my shape layers. Okay, so now that we have all of these layers here, basically what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna select them all, center up the key, center up the um, center points, and I'm just gonna drag this and click it to my Vox outlines. Now I could delete that Vox outlines. I don't need that anymore um, because I already have the Vox text underneath. So now it's perfectly lined up like that. So um, let's see here, P on the keyboard or U on the keyboard. I don't need these keyframes anymore, these path keyframes. I'm just gonna uncheck those. 
Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna need to add some trim paths. Now again, I'm sure there's probably easier ways to do this, um, but I'm gonna be doing it like this. I like it when all the shapes are separated, but basically, excuse me, um, under contents, you'll see here add. If you click this, there are some really neat things you could add to objects. I'm just gonna go to hit trim paths and I'm gonna set some keyframes for start and end. And I know, again, this is leg work. I'm doing this for, um, for all of the layers. Sometimes custom animations, it's just, that's what you have to deal with. Not everything's built into After Effects, and even if it is, you probably don't know everything that they've added or moved or changed. So, what I, basically, looking at this V here, what I want it to do is I want it to snake around like that. So I like that, I like that starting position. I'm gonna go to about one second, and I want it to go all the way open, and then I want the tail to follow it and close it. What I want this to do is I want this to, to go over about 10 keyframes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Basically what this does is it is it kind of gives it a, a, it starts and then the tail follows after and it ends and then the tail closes off. And I like that look. I think that's a good look. I'm just going to copy these. Make sure I move my timer all the way to the left or else they'll be pasted in weird spots. I'm just going to paste these keyframes onto the other objects, making sure I delete um, that spare keyframe on each one. So basically what you get is you have something that kind of looks like that. I like that. I think that looks good. I'm going to highlight all of these and I'm going to right click and go to keyframe assistant easy ease. That'll just make it a little bit smoother. There it is. Um, it makes the going in and going out a little bit smoother. So now what I want to do is I want to stagger these. Now there's a really neat way that I found out how to stagger these really simply. Um, and I can't figure it out, but I'm just going to try it. Um, I believe it's, you select all of them, you right click, and you go to, maybe, Sequence Layers, this is it. Now Sequence Layers, I always, always forget how to use. But basically, what this allows you to do is it allows you to set a duration for how, how separated you want them to be. Um, so, it's kind of confusing. It's going to take me a few tries. I know this composition is 10 seconds long, so let's see if I try 11 seconds, what that does. Okay, it doesn't do anything. I'm just going to control Z, make sure I don't keep that. Sequence layer, and I think it's 9 seconds maybe. Okay, so yeah, that's how it works. My, my, cons, my, um, my thing is, is 10 seconds long, and basically what I want is I want them each to be separated by one second, so I separate it off by one second. Um, but I actually don't want them separated by one second. Um, I want them to be separated by only huh, this only 15 frames. So let's see if it's base 30 or base 60, then that's 45. And that's basically what I want it to look like. Now, the only caveat here is that I actually, because the, the O has two inner has an inner and an outer um i don't want the ins I, I want the the v o and x main ones to all be the concrete timed perfected ones but the inside of the o can kind of happen a little bit after the o but i want the x to definitely start at the same time in between the o as the o did from the v so that's why i, I move those those keyframes around a little bit so opening up the vox you start to kind of get an idea of what we're of what we're getting at here. I'm just going to select all these layers, but actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to make sure I'm still recording just so I'm not going insane. And I'm still recording, perfect. So I'm, I selected all these layers, control shift C, and I'm going to name this Vox. I'm just going to name this outlines just because there's no other outlines. And what I want to do is I want to go to effect generate fill because I want to make this the yellow color that Vox has it. So, just a basic yellow color, and there you go. Another thing that's interesting about the Vox logo is they have a white layer as well. So I'm just gonna duplicate the outlines, set the um, top one to start maybe 10 frames after the bottom one, and I'm gonna make the bottom one white, like real white, not off-white and I'm gonna add a drop shadow. So I'm gonna come up to effects and drop shadow. 
I'm going to put it on the bottom and now you kind of get an idea of, of, of what we're looking at here. I'm going to, I'm going to make the softness maybe 10 because it's not so sharp in the, in the final build. Um, but it's pretty close. So let's see how that looks. And that looks about how Vox's looks. So we're good on that front. Um, the last part that we need to do is the intro part. So I'm just going to drag these layers over. I don't need them to start quite yet. And what I did was I went to this web, to this YouTube channel, and I found Lines Backgrounds Free HD Animation. And basically, it kind of gives you a nice, like weird, um, liney animation. And what I did was I, I screen captured it, and I'm just going to drag this screen capture into After Effects, and I'm going to drag this right on top. From here, I'm going to Control Shift C and change this to Lines, because what I want to do is I want to double click this and open this and uh, make some changes. So I'm going to duplicate it. Actually, before I duplicate it, I want to add a, a, some contrast to it because I, I think that there's not enough contrast. So I'm just going to search for brightness and contrast. Drop this on, bring the brightness down, bring the contrast up. Now I'm going to duplicate this, drag it over, and move these around a little bit. And it's going to take a little bit. I'm going to just kind of mess with them here as well. Um, it's going to take a little bit. I'm going to I'm going to move. I'm going to come into this composition and just make sure. I like where these lines are at. I kind of want to line over the over the X and maybe a line over the O slash V. So I'm just going to take these and maybe drag them over. I think maybe it's a little too far. I think that this one can come over and this one can come over. Yep, I think that'll be good. Um, and from here, what I need to do is I need to put the Vox underneath the lines and I need to change the blending mode to luma mat, and then there's also inverted luma mat. Now, inverted luma mat is probably better, but basically what this does is that this I um, got this, the text layer selected, and when I change the color, the lighter I get, the less it shows of the layer on top of it. So if it's all the way black, it's all the way dark. With luma mat, it's the other way around, basically. Um, no, it's actually not the other way around. I, I don't know. Um, anyways, we're just gonna stick with with luma inverted mat. Um, all of these things do different things. There's alpha mat, there's alpha inverted, there's all kinds of different things. But um, for this one, you want to use the inverted luma inverted mat. So what I want this to do is I want, I want this Vox to kind of come into picture. So I'm going to select the opacity at 100 at 40 frames. At zero frames, I'm going to make it at zero. And then at about 30 frames, I'm going to open up the the lines um, composition, double click that, and I want to create a new layer. And this is the color that I'm going to want my text to be. So I kind of want it to be kind of an off, an off black, uh, kind of like that. And a little too purple for me, honestly. Um, I could change the fill on this. Uh, let's see here. Kind of maybe more like, more like that. And I want this to have a transparency as well. Set a keyframe zero, and then maybe at uh, one and a half seconds, be at a hundred. I'm just gonna make these nice and smooth. Um, you could do easy ease, easy in, easy out. Um, and actually, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna move this keyframe out to a second as well. And I'm going to make these um, smooth. So I'm, again, I'm using my motion script. Um, there are different types of smoothings that you can get in After Effects, but that's just what I'm using. So you can see there that we get a nice pixelated intro. And about right, uh, maybe right here is when we want our lines to come up to, or our outlines to come in, in into full effect. So you see, we're gonna start, and then the lines are gonna open up and finish it off to about three seconds. Now, um, I'm just gonna highlight all of these layers, drag them out, 
at about 15 seconds. I like when there's a little bit of a space in between when something starts. If something starts immediately, it kind of, I don't know, it has a weird effect to it. But now lastly, I'm just going to create a new null object, attach all of these objects to it, and scale this thing properly. So I think maybe 58% looks good, so I'm going to drop it down to 50, set a keyframe here, and then at about 10 seconds I'm going to set this to maybe 65. So that should get us our desired 53 or so um, in the beginning. So now what you wind up is you have something that kind of looks like that. And with the scaling it kind of adds, adds to the effect. So anyways, this tutorial went 21 minutes, it actually went 3 minutes, actually it'll be a little bit shorter for you because I made a mistake, I had to go edit it. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video give it a like, be sure to subscribe, let me know of other intros or stuff like that that you want me to re replicate. There's a cool channel um, who I just started talking to. His name is Easy After Effects Tutorials. He does basically the same idea, except for what he does is he actually adds a spin to it. So he takes unanimated um, logos and animates them. Basically what I did was I took an animated intro and showed you how they did it. Um, I might kind of use his idea as well, but I just kind of wanted to let you guys know. He's a really cool channel. He did a, um, he did a, a Nike logo intro and it looks really cool. So anyways, go check that out. And anyways, my channel, you can check out my channel, my main channel as well, where I post science-y stuff with After Effects um, blended in. Um, and be sure to subscribe if you want to watch the um, speed art, you can as well. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Anyways, thanks for watching.